Right guys, welcome down to what is the 2018 planning meeting. And I'm so glad that I could have you in attendance. And what we are going to be doing is revamping the battle board and getting it ready for 2018. The 2017 battle board, there were some successes in there, but for me, there wasn't really enough action going on on the battle board. So if you're not familiar with the battle board process, this is a list of stuff that I want to try and achieve over the following year. Now, what I didn't really do on the last few battle boards is actually give me the full year to achieve. So I kept kind of changing and switching and messing around with it, just trying to find the right formula. But what we're gonna to do today is get the plans in action going into 2018, leading up to the quest for the open, and maybe a touch beyond that as well with some stuff that hopefully will start to come to fruition. But this is all about improvement to my own game, hopefully maybe giving you some insights into what you can do within your game as well, and giving me content to film along the way. So, what I need to do is actually repair the damage that was done when we moved house, and go from there. Okay, battle board, let's do it. Right then, let's have a little bit of a talk through about the battle board so far. So, we have it split up into certain components. What's the best side of doing that? So we've got it split up into components. Short game, long game, play game, fitness game, and then comp game. Now one of the main things which is gonna be changing going into next year is I'm gonna be using strokes gained much more. So I've managed to get a partnership with My Around Pro, which is an app to be used on the phone. And I'm gonna be utilizing that quite a lot to try and drive all these different amount of goals. Because the one thing which these do, and I know what some of them do, they do improve. And I feel that my game is getting better after I do some of these tests. But it's gonna be nice to be able to quantify that, to actually get some data behind it as well. So that's what the strokes gain system is gonna allow me to do. This is for um, that, by the way. So the first thing back on there is the scramble test. Now with the scramble tests, I know that they work. So I can see the improvement within my short game, not only in what I feel, but actually the results that I've had in competition. So last year, I had some of my best results in competitions, but also I found that my short game, when I wasn't playing well, was actually helping me and still stabilizing my scores. So those are going to be staying. So the next one, which has just been jotted on there, is the one club scramble test. Now very simple, over nine holes, if I use, say, a lob wedge to get up and down on the first hole, then I can't use that again for the rest of the nine holes. It's gonna hopefully give me a little bit more of a variation in my short game, because I am quite tempted at the moment just to fly everything quite high. I can't quite picture the low chip and runs as well as I should do. And especially going into open qualifying and playing on links courses, if you can't play a good chip and run, then you might as well not turn up. So that's something which I do need to improve on. Third on list, ladder tests. Now ladder tests are relatively simple. It's just varying distances with pitching clubs and short game clubs. So I've already got one of those set up on the FSX software, going from, I think it's 50 yards all the way up to 130 yards. The one thing I do need to randomly add, in, add into that is a random element. So at the moment I've just been going to 50 and then going up five yard increments to 130. So I do need to make that a little bit more random to make it more game orientated. Now here's one which I have not done at all this year to be honest, a bunker test and bunker practice. So with my bunker play, I'm relatively good out of bunkers. That is one of my strengths, I would say. But compared to a really good bunker player, then I'm probably not quite there yet. So the bunker test, very similar to the scramble test, because again, it's an in-game test, I know it works. When I'm playing nine holes, taking the ball, chucking it off the green into a bunker, and then trying to get up and down. Now some courses obviously they won't have a bunker around the green, but most courses that you play will have at least one sand trap somewhere near that green, unless it's something like Windermere, which doesn't have any bunkers at all, but then I wouldn't obviously do that test there. So one thing I've added in here, lesson block practice. Now those lessons are still gonna be carrying on with Dan Whitaker, um, and I feel my game technically has come along quite well this year, but it's getting the balance right between the block practice 
and competitive games as well. Because on a block practice session where you're trying to work in a new technique, you can be at a driving range, you can work on what you're feeling, just trying to get into these certain positions that you may want to hit. And you can use certain games on the driving range to try and improve. But again, you've just got to hit a lot of balls to try and get used to a new movement. And then you need to engage it in the competitive practice. So leaving time for a block practice is still very, very important. Just been trying to put the blinds down. I realise I don't know how to work them. Hang on, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Hey, hello. So the first one to be put into the putting is a mini speed test. Now I did the speed test a couple of years ago now and it definitely improved my overall technique, although it was absolutely exhausting uh, when I did it. I'll include the link to the video. Now, with the mini speed test, that is very much a block practice session. And there's a couple of things I'm going to jot down here. But what I found is when I was doing the scramble test on the course, my putting as a result improved because I was obviously trying to hold the put after the chip. So that is something I'm going to be continuing and I should be able to see my putting stats improve as I go alongside what I'm doing with my short game. So the one thing I've added on here is the 17 to 15 foot putts. Now one thing I've discovered since using my round pro and strokes gained is that inside six foot in a competition, apart from at Blackpool North Shore where I had an absolute head off, my putting's actually really good. But as soon as I get outside that from 17 to 15 foot particularly, so these types of putts that you really need to be making if you want to get those good birdie chances converted and you want to be making those long par saves, this is an area I really, really need to improve upon. If I can get my scramble test done, I can improve my short game and then start holding more of these birdie putts, then I'm actually going to have a chance to shoot low, which I've not really done this year. I have shot consistently in competitions around kind of four over to two under in that type of area, but I've not managed to get that five or six under, which I really wanted to get in a competition this year. So that is what I really need to try and improve upon. And then at the bottom here, we've got the lessons and a smiley face, so I need to carry on getting lessons. That's one thing I've neglected in my putting for the second half of this year. So on the long game tests, I've got the fairway finder test, I've got the driver power, I've got the stents in it, and then I've got the 130 to 180 yard tests. Now, the 130 to 180 yard test, these can be done on the course, but I might also get some tests set up on the FSX software as well for this, because this is an area, again, which has been identified as somewhere that I really, really need to improve on. My ladder test for my wedges, and then these tests to actually improve my approach shots, they're gonna be key to get me within this type of distance, seven to, seven to 15 feet, to try and make the birdie. So this is where all these start to link together. The fairway finder is simply around where I'm just going to be hitting irons off the tee, just trying to find the fairway and see what results that has on my strokes gained to see if that improves. Well, it will improve my accuracy off the tee, but is it going to start to improve my approach play? The driver power test, that is the complete opposite, trying to develop enough power in my driver so I can give it a rip and then see what that does to my scoring as well. Because one thing which strokes gained shows on the main tour is that actually power off the tee, getting it out there a distance, even if it doesn't necessarily find the fairway, can actually be an improver to score. So that's something that I've got to do as well. And the stents in it is something which I basically want to try. So hitting a three wood off the tee almost seems to have become a little bit obsolete in some respects. So you don't actually see that many people doing it. I think because driver technology has improved enough to help um, with maybe some offline and some errant strikes off the tee. So you don't really see it that often. Now, is that a case that it doesn't actually help the score or not? But that's what I want to test out a little bit. So that might stay on the board for the year. It might come off. I'm not sure. It depends how we get on. So on my play game here, this has become super, super simple now. So I want to try and get done some practice rounds where it's not necessarily, it's not just about going out and having a knock. It's actually about trying to treat that practice round as a, a real competition to really make it matter. Now I've got some ideas about how to do that, possibly playing for a little bit of money once we go out, maybe getting some of you guys to come along and play with me is a little bit of a competition. There's a few different things that I can do around that. But again, that's all gonna be used in my round pro and strokes gained, and it's all gonna be trying to drive myself to actually gain strokes every time I go out and play. Now here's the board which I well, tend to struggle with most of all, switch around. It's my fitness game. Um, 
I, I struggle, I've got to be honest, at this. When you talk about things to try and improve upon, when you talk about things to try and actually get better at, fitness is something that I've been trying to figure out for quite some time now. And at this moment in time, I've not quite managed to find the winning formula. See, the thing is with fitness, I know that I need to get fitter, I know that I need to get stronger to try and improve other areas within the battle ball test. And yet this is, continually a bit of a weak link. I'm not a person who is naturally drawn uh, to exercise and to be fit. And it is something that I've not quite managed to crack the code of yet. I think a lot of it does come down to desire because I think if you really wanted to get fit, and it's, it's the same with most things, you know, if you really want to do something, then it's all about getting out there, doing it and breaking the bad habits. Return to its former glory. <laughs> Don't really know where to stand for this one. Right, last couple of uh, ones here. Now, well, last few. Hole in one. Now, you, can, you can't plan for a hole in one. So it doesn't matter how big that I write it. I, you know, you, you never really know when you're going to get one. But, but, I really want to get one uh, next year and having it on the battle board and having it there in mind, it has actually done something quite different to my par three performance after the open. So before the open, I was actually losing a lot of shots on par threes. But since the open, since Rick got his hole in one, leaving me the only lad in the group who hasn't got one yet, my attitude towards par threes changed very, very, very quickly. And I've been attacking the pin so much more. And that has led to an improvement in my par three scoring. So even if I don't manage to get that hole in one, I'm gonna go into 2018 with the attitude that every par three is an opportunity for me to try and get there. So I'm gonna be attacking a lot more on those holes. Now, so far that's helped. I obviously need to temper that with the fact that if it pins right next to the water, maybe I may need to be a little bit safer, but maybe not. Maybe I should just attack all the time. And on the final column here, we've got the PGA comp win. I want to try and get a gain two. That's my goal. Because if I can't win at the local PGA level where there are some good players playing, then actually getting to the open, then that really, really isn't going to be happening at all. And the fact is that getting to the open is for me and for Rick and for certainly people like us who you know, want to try and achieve something but simply can't play full time, getting there is so difficult to do. It's not impossible because there's always a chance in the Open Championship. That's the reason why it's one of the greatest competitions, not only in golf, but just in sport generally. However, to get there is exceptionally difficult. But if I can use that as a vehicle, to try and win some comps, then that's gonna be good. That's gonna be crossing off some goals that I had for quite some time, whilst aiming for a bigger goal as well. So it's just those little steps to get there. And also here, to try and get through first stage of qualifying, which is something that, even at this moment in time, I think I could do, because at first stage, you need to be shooting a couple under at some of the courses. Certainly a couple under would have got you through at West Langs. So that is a, certainly a big goal for me. And if all this comes together, then that gives me the chance. So that's the battle board um, done, <laughs> sort of. Uh, what it needs now is obviously implementation, but also timings, because just writing things on the board, and this is what I discovered last year, just writing things on a board doesn't make it happen. You have to actually commit time to it. Now, the way I've structured the battle board going into next year is all the tests, all the tests, they only need to be done once a month. So you can see here what I've got is I've got the scramble test once a month, one club um, scramble test again once a month, ladder test once a month, blah, 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 blah. But if you add all these together, all of a sudden that becomes a very, very full month worth of practice. It also becomes a nice full month of creating content as well. So if I can stick to that, which is a, you know, a big if considering the amount of time that already we may be away next year, it's, it's mind boggling then that's gonna give me the chance to improve. And that's the balance that needs to be struck because going into 2018, it's probably gonna be one of the busiest years as far as traveling, as far as filming is concerned, and as far as coaching is concerned as well. I've already taken some steps to try and free up a little bit more time. 
Uh, so I've actually taken someone on board now to help me with the admin side um, of lessons and all the rest of it. And hopefully that will help me moving forward to free up a little bit more time to create content and give this a good go. Right guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for watching the content from this year as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you do that below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've done your own battle boards going into 2018, if you have, I would love to see you share them on social media with me as well. So I'm excited about where next year is heading. It's all about cracking on and making sure it happens. Right guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.